Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Yes, we know that it has been a long time since we posted our last video, almost about two to three weeks and we have rarely given such a gap in our schedule since the past one and a half years. So we are extremely sorry for that, but uh, I was extremely busy uh, on both the weekends with the uh, regular walk life chaos and with the interviews. And I am here to share one of my experiences in the interviews. Yes, I am here to share my experience about the new IAMS interview interview which I have recently appeared on 22nd of February and I'm going to share the entire experience with you this time uh, cap uh, 2021 has arranged this uh, interview online and since it is online uh, there can be a lot of chaos about uh, the network connection and all so do not worry first of all do not worry that it is online and it is a new platform we are moving towards a new world altogether after COVID-19 and that's why we need to adapt to these changes and I would uh, personally recommend you to get accustomed to this platform by using zoom for one or two times at least before going into the real interview that is what you can do at least I personally did it with one of my seniors I conducted the zoom interview with him personally so that I could see whether my connection the mobile network that I am using whether it is appropriate or not to give the proper amount of speed that we need to connect uh, for the interview and uh, yes if you are connecting on a mobile Wi-Fi uh, make sure that you do not receive much calls during the interview period so these are the few precautions that you need to take before appearing for the interview and you should be fully dressed in formals uh, and uh, you should be prepared with patience. Why I'm saying this? Uh, as I move into the experience, I am going to uh, tell it to you. First of all, it's going to be on Zoom platform. So remember this, it's going to be on the Zoom platform and the slot that is allotted to you is a slot that will allow probably 11 or 12 members in that slot. 12 members in a particular slot is always there, maybe the forenoon session or the afternoon session. Now the forenoon session goes from uh, 8.30 onwards to extend it to about 12.30, 1, even 1.30. Uh, that is the timeline. And for the afternoon session, it's about uh, from 1.30 to extend it to 5.30 to 6. Uh, to 6.30 at max. Uh, so these are the timelines. So do not get tensed or nervous. If you do not get the call up to six because I was the last candidate in my slot so I'm going to share the entire experience what happened so basically 12 people were in my slot and I was uh, I had opened this window and I was waiting for my call and after one hour the panelists actually gave the list of uh, registration numbers and the sequence that they're going to order uh, like um, come in for interview and unfortunately or fortunately mine was the last i was the 12th candidate in the group so i was expecting my interview after three hours or something like that so about four hours from 1 30 to 5 30 i needed to patiently went wait in front of my uh, computer screen uh, waiting for my call because any time now and then they can give you a call and your window pop-up will open and you will be requested to connect so just sit there do not uh, roam around here and there just because your interview is scheduled late or you are late in the uh, uh, in, in the sequence so just wait in front of the laptop you may always uh, uh, go to the toilet uh, or uh, may surf over the internet uh, looking up for things uh, to study uh, but uh, i would recommend you to stay in front of the screen throughout the process that is at least what i did throughout the process i tried to stay in front of the screen as much as possible you will get bored uh, you will lose your patience at time and you will feel tensed as well that why are uh, they not connecting me in fact i had to mail them because they had mailed that if it crosses 5 30 p.m then you will have to get in touch with our pocs so i got in touch with them and they told me that it's going to extend up to 6 or 6 30 p.m and they waited and i finally got my call around uh, 5 45 p.m i was the last one so if somebody is watching this video uh, if he or she gets their name at the last so do not get tensed your call will come and it will come around uh, 6 p.m or 5 30 to 6 p.m uh, so just wait for your call and make sure that your internet connection and network connection is proper and nobody calls you during the interview those are the things that you need to keep in mind now go with formals fully attired and wait with patience in front of the uh, computer 
there is going to be a white screen where it will be mentioned that CAP 2021 waiting room and they will mention that until the panelists allow you to enter the room, you will not be allowed to enter the interview. So that is what it does uh, while the others are giving the interview in the slot. So it will go, go in sequence. Uh, you can definitely get your uh, sequence number or like your fifth in the sequence or sixth in the sequence by the sequence of registration numbers that they usually do give in the chat box uh, right, th right when the interview starts. So you can assume that one interview uh, consumes about 10 to 15 minutes at max. So accordingly with the breaks and all that they take in between the interviews, you can uh, accordingly calculate the time after which your interview may be scheduled. So just try to, uh, try to stay there in front of the screen at that point of time. Now coming straight away to the interview questions. Uh, this is the procedure you have to wait in the waiting room and suddenly you will be called for the interview the black screen will pop up and you need to connect uh, and now coming to the question so first opening statement uh, the cliche question uh, tell us something about yourself uh, that is not there in the cv that is what exactly there were two panelists uh, in my interview p1 and p2 let us call them uh, p2 seemed a little disinterested because of the fact that he they had already interviewed about 11 candidates and it was uh, late in the evening around 6 and i was the last candidate so there was sufficient reasons there were sufficient reasons to get tired uh, uh, because the interview process is also a little monotonous at times uh, taking the interview can be difficult and that's why i could e uh, clearly understand the the problems that the interviewers did face uh, so they were looking a little tired uh, interviewer p2 was uh, not interested uh, right now p1 question me tell me something about yourself that is not there in the cv so i told them the details of my curriculum the details of my family background from where i rose from nothing to something today and i told them my accolades my achievements uh, my uh, academic record that i maintained a decent academic record throughout and the uh, medals that i have received uh, till date the uh, internships that I have done, the job experience that I am associated with, I told them everything. It took me about two to two and a half minutes. And I mentioned about my three startups, uh, including a business. So the question straight away went there, uh, as was expected. Uh, so uh, the panelist uh, P1 asked me that uh, you told, told in your introduction about this business. So what was this business model all about? Can you please explain it? I did explain to him that how uh, in the beginning I had no financial income. I had no financial backup. So I had to outsource the garments and I had to convince the customer. So I was acting as a middleman and taking my own commission of 5 to 10 percent. And I was getting the uh, clothes or the garments from the manufacturer itself, uh, taking my cut and giving it to the uh, customers so i was bringing i was acting as a mediator uh, uh, between the customers and the suppliers and uh, the question that he asked straight away the interview went in an opposite direction altogether and this is a stress interview let me tell you he told me the business model that you are talking about is completely unethical don't you think think so so i was startled a bit unethical in the sense that you were acting as a middleman and you didn't manufacture yet you took the cut in between so i told him that uh, flipkart amazon all of these platforms are these b2b or b2c platforms wherein they act as an intermediate so uh, i think in that sense it makes uh, quite a sense that without any financial investment uh, uh, going to the survival instinct you uh, do adopt that method then he told me p1 told me uh, um, so if you go into a B school, if you go into an MBA college, what would you like to change about your business model? I told him that I will learn the business structurization and all. So he straight away stopped me in between and told me that ethics cannot be taught in any MBA school or ethics cannot be taught in any school of study. Ethics is something that comes from within. If you're doing bad things, you will keep on doing bad things. If you're doing good things, you will keep on doing good things. Do you think it's correct uh, to, to survive uh, sucking somebody else's blood? So it was completely, I was completely startled. So it's going completely against my expectations. I wanted him to ask from my business so that I could express my thoughts on it. But he's taking it into an opposite direction altogether. He thinks that the practice is unethical to be a middleman. And I had to convince him sitting there that it is not. So I decided not to go into much of an argument. And I told him, yes, sir, you're correct. Uh, maybe it's not ethical at that point of time, but it's not about sucking somebody's blood. So he told me, no, no, I'm not talking about you. I completely empathize with your background. I completely empathize with your situation. I'm talking in general. I wanted to know your views on this. So let's go to the next thing. And it asked me uh, one of the virtues and one of the 
bad things and good things about Jadavpur University, the university that you've studied in. So I told him that uh, Jadavpur University gives a diverse environment to study in, being the fact that it is an university in itself and it's not an engineering college. So you get to know and meet different people from different cultures, different backgrounds, and you need to get to talk different things over a cup of coffee. The bad thing, however, I told him that the national image of the institute, which is harming the repute of the institute on an international level and is influencing the recruiters to an extent, uh, is the uh, wrongly put up uh, anti-national image of JU along with JNU and I also told him about the infrastructural uh, facilities that are not that great because of the fact that it is a state funded university and the fees is meagerly 10,000 rupees per uh, for our entire coursework. Uh, so it is completely state funded and that's why the infrastructure is not up to the mark. So he was quite satisfied with the answer. The next question was, uh, Shomujit, uh, what are the uh, seven, uh, how many states are there in the northeastern region of India? So I told him that there are seven states, namely the seven sisters, Meghalaya, Assam, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura and others. I didn't remember all the seven but I named five of them and I told and others and he was satisfied with the answer. He then moved on to question me that uh, um, uh, do you consider yourself lucky Shomujit that you have seen so much at such a young age. I told him I no, do, do not only consider myself lucky but I uh, have learned a lot from the entire procedure by meeting different kinds of people, uh, getting to know different kinds of situations, being in everything of them and now I know how to deal with them so I told him in details so he was satisfied with that answer. Now comes P2. Uh, P1 said, I am done. Uh, you may ask your questions. P2 asked me about my role in Hindustan Zinc Limited. I told him that I was involved in uh, in, in uh, SOP preparation, standard operating procedures preparation, in, in PT packages, process technology packages preparation, in regular shift in charge duties, in control room operation. And I have completed one Six Sigma project and I am up with another. Uh, because I knew that if I drive the conversation towards Six Sigma, it would uh, uh, gather an interest in him because he's from uh, like... MBA is more about operations and these things, so it will drive an interest into him. So I told him that I have done a Six Sigma project, which I have actually done, and it gave a profit of around 4.5 crore. Uh, I told him the statistics and I, how did I do it. And then he went straight away to a Six Sigma question, which I was expecting. Uh, he asked me that, uh, can you please explain the fishbone diagram? So I told him that the fishbone diagram, also popularly known as the Ishikawa diagram or the cause effect diagram, is basically something that lets you know the root causes. I explained the entire structure and he uh, told okay I am done and uh, both of them concluded and told uh, told us from it all the best thank you very much you can disconnect so I don't know whether this interview went good or went bad initially went in a different direction which was not very uh, seemingly very good but eventually it ended on a good note but the questions were very less it went on about for 10 minutes out of which two two and a half minutes were my introduction one one and a half minutes with ethical debate and about five to six minutes of actual interview which went decently good so you cannot really say or state that the interview was good or bad it was just an experience uh, that i didn't expect i studied a lot about in an economy and other things the farmers bill but they didn't ask me anything in fact nothing at all either they were not at all interested or uh, Mm, uh, since I was late in my schedule, they might be tired or something like that. Uh, that might also be the case. Uh, so I am not expecting that good a score. The interview went uh, average, not very good, not very bad. Uh, so that is my experience about New Am's CAP interview. Hope you liked it. The points that I said in the, right in the beginning, keep those in mind while appearing for the interview. Do not get tense. All the very best for the interview. Hope you do good in uh, other interviews too. Whatever interview I face, I'm going to make a video on that. Uh, so thank you very much. If you liked our walk, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. That's it for today.